guests and visitors, our guests that we are not, you know, highly anxious about it being Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> I said there would be 10 people in the service today based upon how many yeah, came to early service because it was Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> However, we're ignoring all of that in this service. We won't even have a prayer for Super Bowl Sunday today. That just doesn't seem appropriate. Now, Pastor Fro is not here. Uh, the pastor at Trinity in Sacramento, uh, who is also a chaplain, has a new commanding officer and ended up on Tuesday saying he had to appear at Beale Air Force Base, so he calls me desperate for somebody to come down to Trinity. I said, I missed last week and I'm scheduled to preach, so I'm going to be at Holy Cross. But you can call Pastor Fro. <laughs> tell him I gave him permission to go. <laughs> so he is there today. Um, if you look carefully at your worship folder, you realize that in two weeks, we're going to be having a Lord's meeting here. Rather important Lord's meeting, you get call updates and all of that type of thing. And so uh, mark that, it'll be roughly that noon. So plan on that the 27th, Sunday the 27th. Mm -hmm. And with that, oh, another thing. Mm -hmm. Notice that the opening hymn has verse 2, men sing. And verse 4, the women sing. Now, if you're gender confused, <laughs> you are perhaps you know, check on this. Because in early service, we had quite a few people who were. We can do better than that. Okay, with that, we'll have to do it.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. For if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. He has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the consequences of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I will remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. You hold fast to the world, the word I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received. That God died for our sins and according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appears to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, and to all the prophets. Last of all, as of one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though I was not I. But the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believe. Now Christ is proclaimed and raised from the dead. How can you say, how can some of you say, there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then even Christ has been raised. If Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified about God that he raised Christ. But we did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. Or if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
mystery of Jesus has been revealed in many ways. We just sang about it in the hymn. First, there was the star in the sky pointing out to the entire world that the Savior, the King of the Jews, had been born. And then Jesus is baptized in the Jordan River when the Father spoke about his beloved Son and the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus bodily in the form of a dove. Jesus is then rejected in his hometown in Nazareth as a fulfillment of scripture, even though the people wanted to kill him, he walked through their midst and went on to perform miracles of turning water into wine, casting out demons, healing various diseases, and bringing in a large number of fish. <clears throat> However, these are not the miracles that the Word made flesh came to do. These are temporal, here today and gone tomorrow kind of gifts. They're not the gifts and the blessings that God became man in order to give. Yeah, he gives us these things for today, to be sure, but that's not all. No. Not just for men, but God makes us blessed forever. You know, we cannot trust our blessings now. People sought blessings from Jesus in our text. People from the Jewish area and the Gentile area came to seek Jesus for his gifts of healing and being cleansed. We seek blessings and gifts from God through faith and prayer. It's not just a financial crisis or a health challenge to send us to our knees. Think of the challenges our changing culture creates for the Christian faith and our daily interaction with those around us. It is all right to come to God for the gifts of today. After all, he taught us to pray Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus sees the needs of people and he blesses them with his gifts. Jesus heals those who come to him. Jesus provides daily bread and sometimes even miracles to care for us. However, in all of this, I think of Tevye in Fiddler on the Roof. To paraphrase Kevya, a figure on the roof? It sounds crazy. You might say that all of us living with the faith challenges in this culture are all figures on the roof, trying to keep our balance, to maintain our faith. Why do we stay? <coughs> this is our home. And God helps us to keep our balance, sometimes even miraculously. But woe to those whose faith is only our earthly gifts. Just because God gives us earthly, temporal gifts, does not mean that we will have them forever. Jesus warns against putting our faith in our temporal gifts, such as money, food, Laughter, a good reputation. I mean, finances can vanish with the drop in the market. Or our nest egg can be threatened with inflation. Our joy can be turned to sadness or depression. The changing conditions where we live bring us to look for greener pastures, even in other parts of the country only to find a neighbor in our backyard. Many who have made the move never found another church home where they are fed like they are here. And that is worse than a tornado coming up the alley. Christ is our sure blessing forever. We put our faith in the eternal gifts of Christ. The gifts God gives do not reflect our standing before God. 
It's the death and resurrection of Jesus reflects our standing before God. The death and resurrection of Jesus do not pass away. Jesus cannot be killed. He just comes right back. Jesus is our eternal blessing now and forever. Yours is now the kingdom of God. For richer, for poorer, in abundance or hunger, in suffering or rejoicing, Christ and his kingdom are yours. You have a foretaste of the eternal blessings that are to come to you as you're washed, absolved, and fed now as a promise that you will be cared for by God, always by God. When we are forgiven and the peace of God comes to us, we can keep our balance on the pinnacle of the roof. How? Oh, I can tell you in one word. Tradition. Tradition tells us who we are and what God expects of us. We can take Tevye's word and say our one word. How do we keep our balance? Confession, the teaching handed down from God's word, makes us God's chosen exiles here in this place. Here we have a church home that teaches us, feeds us, and sends us into his community. This state, to live as his people, witnessing to the truth that has been handed down to us through his word. So no matter what you are going through in this life, at this moment or the next, Jesus is with you. God is with you. The God who created the heavens and the earth has promised never to leave you nor forsake you. He has written that promise to you not with money, food, happiness, or fame, but he has written to you in the blood of his son. In him, we have the certain promise of forgiveness, life, and salvation. In him, we have the promise that does not fade, change, or decay with time, but a promise that remains sure and firm forever. As long as the Son, the eternal word, lives, you shall live. You have God with you now. And you shall have him and all of his gifts for eternity. For Christ makes us blessed forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And let us now confess our faith in the words of the righteous. I believe in the God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and by all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of me, being of one substance with the Father, and in whom all things were made. Who for us sin and for our salvation came down from heaven and was harmed by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was in Amen and was crucified also for us in the precious blood. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again. Father and Son, who 
has been made manifest in the preaching and the miracles of Jesus Christ. Gather together your great multitude from every Gentile nation and from Judah's remnant that many may know wisdom has come into our flesh. Lord, be your mercy. Grant, O Lord, that your people may always hold fast to the word that has been preached to them and not believe it in vain. To keep that word alive among us. Also, to guide the call committee to that they may rely on the Holy Spirit enabling them to guide us in a call of a faithful senior pastor. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve the family of our godly Christian goals. Give parents diligence in persistence in their duties to teach the faith in word and example. Keep all children the promise you made to them in their baptism. Let the patience, kindness, and endurance of Christian love have no end among us. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Lord God, as you provide for our food in due season, also provide for the rain and the snow to care for our state and our nation. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> oh God, do not let our rewards and blessings consists in the treasures and goods of this world. Give us joy in every sorrow, knowing that if we have you, we lack nothing, and will receive an eternal reward in Christ that cannot fail. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, Give near those who are troubled by any unclean spirit, memory, or thought, and to the sick and all who need your healing, especially Diane, Nikki, send forth your power in the name of Christ Jesus, that they would hear your word and be cured. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless all who trust in you and come to eat the body and precious blood of Christ for the forgiveness of their sins in the blessed sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh Lord, your son is risen from the dead and has promised that he will only be the first fruits from among those who sleep. Preserve us in Christ Jesus with hope beyond this life. Comfort those who mourn with the certainty of Christ's resurrection. And let us live in confident expectation. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We entrust all these petitions to your care, loving Father, confident in your great mercy, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is worshipped together with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your sight. In him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask that you not forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Thank you.